So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you've got, <laughs> hi Jade, I hope you've got um, coffee, lunch, sit back and enjoy some um, insights into project sponsors. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicola Spooner. I'm a director at Nicola Spooner Consulting and my role is to offer a better matching service for project professionals in the legal industry. Um, I spend all day, every day talking to project professionals. So I talk to those people looking for new roles. I talk to those people hiring and those that just like to get a better insight into what's happening in the market. And when I ask them the biggest challenge that they face, um, more often than not, it comes back to project sponsors um, and how they can be often more of a hindrance than a help. So I thought who better to share some expertise in this area than Jeremy Nichols. So yeah, Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy's been an independent project management consultant for well over 10 years now. Um, in that time, he's delivered hundreds of projects across IT, business transformation, construction in multiple sectors, including numerous law firms. Um, and if that's not enough, Jeremy is also the author of The Everyday Project Manager, where he shares principles and uh, that link the best and most successful projects. So thank you for joining us this afternoon, Jeremy. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, gosh, I hope to live up to that introduction. That's uh, very, very kind of you. Um, so why don't we start with understanding what is a project sponsor and why as project professionals, project managers, program managers, why do we need them? So yeah, that's that's probably a great place to start. It's just with the definition for anyone who, who perhaps isn't involved uh, as, as intimately in the in the industry as as, as I am, um, and others are uh, perhaps on this call. But a project sponsor, in, in its most uh, simple definition, is just the the customer on a on a given project. So they're the person who who wants whatever it is that we're going to do done. Um, I, I, I revert back in in my um, training course a lot to. Um, using a, a house building analogy and if you if you wanted to build an extension on your house you would be the customer but you might not um be able to you might not have the skill set or the the contacts in, within the building industry to do that so you employ a project manager to do it for you so the sponsors the the customer the person who's going to be uh, enjoying the the outcome of whatever is delivered okay perfect and why do we need them well there's a, a sponsor fulfills a number of functions. Um, as I say, they're the person who wants whatever it is done. So they they tend to be the driving force behind the project. They're the person who will uh, engage the project manager and say, "This is the thing I want done now. I need you to work with me to deliver this within the the uh, budget by a certain deadline and and to a, the standard that I I prescribe." Um, so. They're vitally important in terms of driving the project. But as I say, like uh, if you think of them as the, the customer, they are the person to whom we refer and go, has this done what we need it to do? They're the person who takes ownership of the project outcomes. So the project manager delivers the thing that the, the project sets out to do, but it's the sponsor who actually ought to take accountability and, and ownership for what we then do with that. So if I'm implementing a, a website for example a project to develop a new website um, the project manager owns the delivery of that website they put it all together and they speak to the sponsor about how they want it to look and, and all that sort of thing but once the website is delivered it's then the sponsor's job to make sure they get out of it what they were expecting to get out of it so if you're using it as a marketing platform it's the sponsor's job then to do with that deliverable what, what it is they, they're going to do to get the benefit out of it. Um, and, and, you know, we, we're talking about sort of some of the challenges and, and good and bad sponsors today. Um, you know, one of the one of the key reasons that sometimes sponsorship doesn't work is that those two roles, the, the role of person delivering the thing and person who will then take responsibility for it, sometimes get muddled up and, and they tend to tread on each other's feet a little bit. Um, so, so one thing we might explore is, is, is where sponsors become either over involved in the delivery or not engaged enough in the getting the benefit out of it and realizing that that's what they're there to do is to check throughout the life of the project am i going to get the thing out of this that i want to get okay so with that in mind the sponsors the beneficiary of the project it seems a bit of, of a confusion that they can often be a bit of a hindrance <laughs> so, <laughs> if we were to look at the three main things that often goes wrong with with sponsors what would you say the the main 
three pitfalls are. Sure. So I've, I've, I've been thinking about this since our, our initial discussion. I think there are probably three three categories that, that, that sort of bad sponsorship in inverted commas um, falls into, fall into. Um, and I think it's, it's important to highlight quite often it's not the fault of the, the person themselves. Quite often sponsors um, are not bad people, but, but, but good people can be bad sponsors. Um, and the, the first sort of hurdle is, is in assigning a sponsor to a project in the first place. And, and um, I choose my words carefully because actually the problem is very often when you assign someone rather than when they are self-selecting. So if we take this idea that the sponsor is the customer, they're the person who wants the thing that comes out of the end, um, it, it, it ought to be a, a, a statement of, of perfect logic that they are they are therefore the person coming to you and saying, I want this done, that they, they have skin in the game, that they're engaged. They ought to be, as I say, self-selecting. But what sometimes happens within, um, particularly within large organizations, is that um, someone will want the project done, but they're not perhaps senior enough or, or not perhaps uh, engaged enough. And, and so they'll pick someone who's perhaps sponsored before or perhaps has seniority within the organization to be sponsor. And that's seen as a, uh, enough to qualify them for the role. But they might have no interest in, um, in actually the outcome of that project. So selection of the sponsor in the first place is is quite important and and that's more of a a broader organizational challenge in making sure you've got one sponsors who understand what that role is um but but two that they they're actually invested in the outcome and they're not just assigned to a project because they've sponsored another project somewhere else um so that's sort of the first one is 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 the the person allocated to the role of sponsor and there's something i i, I touched momentarily there on um, seniority and, and um, there's something about that. The, the best sponsor isn't necessarily the most senior uh, person in an organization and quite a few organizations will go, well, this is uh, uh, this project needs sponsoring, therefore we need to pick the head of that function to do it. Well, the head of that function might have 100, another one, 101 other things on and not be too bothered about this project. But there might be someone slightly further down the, the, the hierarchy who actually is quite interested in this and has enough authority to help and do all the things that a sponsor should do and, and actually possibly be far more engaged and, and invested in the outcome. So thinking about the, the level of seniority of the sponsor and, and, and understanding that it's not necessarily the most senior person uh, in the organization, but perhaps what you want is the least senior person who still has enough authority <laughs> to do the things to, to, to make the wheels turn, grease the wheels and, and keep things moving and, and help the project deliver. Um, so that's the sort of selection of the person. And the other point I wanted to, to touch on here is um, the confusion between project sponsors and project champions. Um, and this, this happens in a number of uh, organizations I've worked for where someone who is, again, typically quite senior, quite invested, quite enthused about the uh, project automatically therefore gets um, assigned a sponsor um, just because they want to see it happen. But again, they're not necessarily the person who's going to get the benefit out of it. Um, they're not necessarily the person who's um, going to uh, be invested in you know the life after the project, but they just want to see this thing rolled out because quite often in, in technology, because it's sexy, it's new or what have you, um, it, or but in, in any industry, it's, it, it's, it's the a person who's very excited. And in legal, um, I think in, in a few of the law firms I've worked for, it, and, and this is not a criticism of them at all, it, it's just a thing that happens in all organisations, but to use legal as an example, um, you know, there's quite often an interest in having someone on the, on the partner side, on the practice side, invested in the project. You want, you know, that support within the practice. If you're a business function like technology rolling out a project, it, it feels good and it, you should have a, a champion, a partner, uh, ideally, you know, shouting for your cause and rallying, you know, other partners and colleagues to, to you know, adopt this, uh, this project. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make them uh, a sponsor. Um, oh, I thought I might just quickly share a, a slide at this point, um, which sort of illustrates my view on um, on what makes a, a, a good sponsor. Um, and if I can just okay. screen, that's all right. 
Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, but I think, you know, this is this is a Venn diagram, which for me illustrates that the, the, the issue, you've got project champions who are, will be, you know, really enthused by the project. They, they'll speak to their colleagues and champion adoption and, and they'll typically have, you know, leadership qualities. Others will follow where they go. That's, that's a great person to have involved in your project. Um, but they're not necessarily, that, that alone does not qualify them as a sponsor. Um, however, sponsors, as I say, you need to have, they need to have some investment. They need to have some skin in the game. Um, you want them focused on the outcome rather than the delivery. You don't want them coming down into the project manager's world necessarily. Um, and, but they must have some level of authority. And like I say, that doesn't mean go for the most senior person in that department. Um, but they must have enough authority to be able to remove roadblocks because that's a key, um, a key part of the sponsor's role. They'll remove those obstacles. And you see there's a crossover there. I've put the, 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 the gap where the pool of available sponsors and the pool of possible project champions crosses over. I mean, that's your ideal sponsor. You want a sponsor who's going to be, who's going to champion it and who's going to be excited about it. But they must also have those other qualities. So the ideal project sponsor is a champion as well. And likewise, just to complete the picture, the project manager should also be a champion for the project. They should all be, they should be motivated by it, excited by the outcome. They should want to champion adoption and talk to their colleagues about it. But their role is very much to be focused on the delivery, making sure that that happens. Because if they're not focused on that, none, you don't get any of the other stuff. You don't get any of the benefit. But importantly, the project manager shouldn't necessarily stand to benefit from the project. They are just brought in to do the delivery. Um, they, they, they must be sort of quite um, impartial and, and provide challenge and just say, is this the right thing? Quite often, if you've got a, a, a project manager who goes too much into the champion space, um, they'll want to push the project through and sponsors the same, push it through at all costs, rather than having that uh, reserve that says, well, hang on, are we doing the right thing here? Are we, are we sticking to the budget that we set ourselves and so on and so forth? And I've just highlighted here the, the ideal PM sponsor relationship is there's, it's just to show there's clear water between the two. That is not to say they shouldn't be absolutely aligned and, and engage one another. They completely should be. Um, but one of the issues with sponsors and project management and, and one way to maximize the impact of your project sponsor as a PM is to ensure that they understand their role, that they're not coming down into the project management world and trying to deliver the project. And in the same way, the PM shouldn't be getting too involved in what are the benefits, how are we going to, you know, leverage this to the, to the maximum once the project's delivered? Because once the project's delivered, the PM's job is done. Um, and then it's for the sponsor to, to get the business benefit from it or, or just the benefit in general. Um, so I, I hope that sort of makes sense as a sort of illustration of uh, uh, some of the some of the qualities of a project manager and, and the sponsor and and how, how there can be some initial challenges there. But also to bring into the into play that idea of a project champion, you absolutely want some champions, um, but you don't equally necessarily that doesn't on in and of itself qualify you as a sponsor or indeed as a project manager. So I think that's point one. That was a long way. That was a long way through point one, wasn't it? That was a very interesting point one. But um, I think it's a really important point because the, the allocating or um, choosing that project sponsor is really, really important. I'd be really in, um, interested to know from anyone that wants to pop in the chat um, which which one of the two you find more challenging, whether it's project sponsors who are are distant from the project and not offering that support that you need. Or the flip side of being a bit over involved in stepping on your toes as a project manager so that would be really interesting to, to sort of get a check on um okay so you touched on this in your answer to the last question but um number two in terms of the common pitfalls was around objectives and understanding what their role is absolutely so um yeah the one, one of the other issues so Let's say you, you, you've you got your sponsor, um, you know, we, we like I say, well, first issue could be the wrong person's been allocated, but whether it's the right or the wrong person, um, the other, one of the other common pitfalls is that they've not been clearly briefed or trained or supported to undertake that role. I find it really interesting as a project professional that we spend loads of time 
um, selecting, in, engaging, hiring project managers, um, making sure the PMO works like a dream, um, you know, making sure that the, the PMs are appropriately qualified and trained, that they've got their APMP or whatever it is. And then we need a sponsor and we go, well, John will do. <laughs> nuts. Um, but that happens. Um, you know, why aren't we training our sponsors? Why aren't we being clear with our sponsors as, as organizations that this is the role of the sponsor? You know, and some, like I say, this happens to varying degrees. Some organizations are actually very good at it. Um, but, but where you get problems with sponsorship is where organizations aren't very good at it and don't provide sponsors that support. Part of the PM's role, I would argue, is when you do initially engage with your sponsor is, is setting those boundaries and go, well, here's what I'm going to do as a PM. I'm going to deliver this project. I'm going to look at the project objectives and I'm going to deliver them for you. And we're going to agree a budget. We're going to agree some timescales and we're going to agree a standard that you want it delivered to. And I'm going to look after that. So you don't need to worry about that. But what I do need you to worry about is when I hit an obstacle, I need you to be engaged with me and helping me to figure out ways that we can keep this project on track. The sponsor is your num your, I mean, as a PM, there is no person more vital. I get, um, <laughs> they're just so important to you as your initial point of escalation and, and not your only point of escalation, but certainly your initial one, that, that conversation, you should be hand in glove with your sponsor, talking to one another the whole time. But the PM's role is the delivery. They must remain focused on that. The sponsor should be worrying about, well, if we do this or if this doesn't deliver on time, how do I still make sure I get the benefit out of it? What's happening on the project that might threaten that benefits case? And what can I speak to the PM about, about how we might change the approach to ensure that I still get as much benefit out of this delivery as possible? To use the website uh, example I gave earlier, you know, the PM should be engaged fully in making sure the website delivers on time, it launches properly. Um, but the sponsor should be thinking about just assuming that that's going to happen and then going, when it does, how do I get the maximum benefit out of that website? And is there anything that's going on with the development of it at the moment that might threaten the thing that I want to get out of it? So if I'm using it as a marketing platform, do I have all of that marketing functionality that I want to get out of it? Do I have a really good landing page? Can I? Can we, can we talk about that and explore that so I'm getting maximum benefit? You worry about whether it's on time or not. You worry about whether it's gonna you know, deliver to budget. But let's talk, you know, talk to me about, am I still gonna get the benefit out of it that I want? But a lot of sponsors don't have that mindset. And it's not that they couldn't, but it's that they're, they're not trained in what a sponsor is. They're not given that information. They're not given that set of objectives. And they're not often held to account for the benefits afterwards. Very often a project will deliver and everyone will pat each other on the back. Job well done, guys, off you go home. Um, projects delivered. Well, yeah, but nobody's looking at, did we get out of it what we set out to do? Are we getting any of the benefit? Because that's the reason why you do it. Project delivery is just uh, the sort of the penultimate step in the process. It's not the end. You've got to then look at the benefits. You've got to go back to why were we doing this in the first place? And the sponsor is the person that does that. Um, and, and on behalf of a business, typically, you know, it's their job to make sure that the business is getting out of the project what it's set out to. Um, so making sponsors more accountable for that sort of thing, and this is this is the third point we're going to come into, but um, is, is, is part of the role. And it, 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 it's, it's perhaps overlooked. And I think if uh, more sponsors were focused on, am I getting the benefits rather than is the project delivering, that would that would help smooth relationships. It's about that sort of understanding what the PM is there to do and what the sponsor is there to do. And when there's any sort of confusion or overlap around that, that's where you tend to get a bit of friction and a, and, and, uh, a bit of uh, misunderstanding around uh, who's doing what. So the second point, yeah, making sure that sponsors and, and making sure that they're supported to do that, making sure that they realize, you know, I talked earlier about, um, you know, when you're selecting a sponsor, well, if you're going to select someone who's, you know, giving them the sponsor role as perhaps a development opportunity, go and, go and work with the PM team and deliver this project. Um, make sure they're supported. Make sure you're giving them the authority to make decisions. I've worked with a lot of sponsors where I've said, here's this issue that we need to talk about, we need to deal with, to which the response has been, understood, Jeremy, I'm just going to go and have to talk to my manager about that. Well, that's 
you know, totally understandable on that, for that individual. They don't feel like they're authorized to make that call, but it's no good in a sponsor. A sponsor needs to be able to make decisions and, and have the authority to make those decisions. They should own the budget. They should uh, be able to say, I accept it's gonna be coming in two weeks later or, or two weeks earlier for whatever that means to me as the sponsor or to the organization. Um, but too often sponsors don't have that support. So yeah, the, the second point is sponsors don't have enough support, enough understanding around their role and, and then the objectives, the personal objectives that they have in relation to the project. And I just started to touch on the <laughs> third one there. And number three on our common- number Three on our list of, of, of common reasons that this thing goes wrong is um, that they're not um, made accountable for the success of the project. Um, and, and too often the, the PM is, is the, the full guy or, 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 or full guy or girl, um, but, but people look to the PM and go, they're the person running the project. The PM is running the delivery. The sponsor should get all the, all, all the plaudits and, and what have you, just as much as the PM does. They should also be prepared to carry the can just as much as the PM does, because they, again, are the customer. They are the person who's taking overall responsibility for this happening. And um, very often um, organizations will assign a sponsor and as long as the project's delivered, they go, sponsor must have done their job. Um, which just isn't the case. Actually, if the project's delivered, that means the PM's done their job. The sponsor then has a bit of work to do. <laughs> um, and a lot of this is, you know, setting out what you, what you want the project to do at the start, or if you haven't done that at the start, at any point, it's never too late to go, what is it we're trying to do here? And I've been involved in projects that have been running some time and without anyone having this sort of common idea around what it is we're doing. Um, but that's for the sponsor to own. Now a PM should absolutely sit with the sponsor, talk about what are we doing this for? Why are we, what are you hoping to get out of this? You know, and, and are we doing the right things to help you get that? The PM is a support role to the sponsor in this case. Um, but the sponsor having decided what they want is accountable for making sure they actually get it and very often on behalf of the business. So it's interesting to me that quite often businesses don't come back to the sponsor afterwards and say, well, did we get that saving? We did this, we implemented this project because you told us we were going to save 50,000 pounds per annum. Did that happen? Um, what people go is we cut the ribbon, job done. Thanks everyone. Off you go home. Um, so, you know, and this is, goes back to my original point quite often um you know you don't have bad people you just have bad sponsors you know th these are quite often good people who are not sufficiently supported in their role or understanding of their role um or or, or you know <laughs> picked at random and pushed into a role that perhaps they've got no interest in delivering or or, or they're just trying to figure out there's definitely you know, a lot for PMs to do in this space. We are trained. We do have those qualifications. We do have experience in doing projects. So we know what it is we expect a sponsor to do. We know what a sponsor should on paper do. So sitting down with these people who are perhaps struggling in their role, perhaps having difficulty understanding, you know, do I, do I own this? Does, is it my fault if it's late? Um, you know, sit down with them, explain to them, here's, here's what I need you to do. And that's not teaching someone to suck eggs. There's, you know, I, I, every, every new project I go into, I, I like to say, here's what I'm going to do for you. Does that, does that make sense to you? I'm going to deliver this and I'm going to give you, get it for you for the budget you tell me by the date you want it to this standard. Um, and, and we're going to do that, you know, we're going to do this together, but that's the bit I'm responsible for. Here's what I need you to do. Are you comfortable with that? And we're going to get together once a week and I'm going to send you as many reports as you like, but we're going to get here together. Um, and I don't, I think, you know, that's one way that we can really help support um, sponsors and avoid some of these pitfalls. Excellent. So in an ideal world, we would select, they would self-select th themselves, our sponsor, and um, they'd be perfect for the project. They would have clear objectives in mind on what they need to do and they'd be accountable for that. Yes. A couple of the questions that have been coming through um, whilst we've been talking have been around what happens if you're mid-flight and you've got a sponsor and you need to you need to get that relationship working better. So what can you do at that stage to, to impact that? Okay. It's a, it's a great question because quite often, you know, 
one, one feels that because we're mid-flight, we've already done, you know, six months of work on this, um, that, you know, it's too late to ask some of these questions. And, and to, to my early point, it's, it's never too late to ask about, you know, why are we doing this? That's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. In fact, it's your responsibility to ask that question. Um, but, you know, that could be a challenge. You need to find a way to ask that in a, that, that isn't confrontational or, 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 or overly challenging. But, but you know, it, it, it might, if you don't understand as PM straight away why you're doing it, then there's a chance that either it hasn't been thought about or um, perhaps somebody else doesn't know or they think it's this, but, you know, they haven't articulated it very well. So it's imp it, it is important to understand that. And, and you can do that mid-flight. It's also never too late to adjust that relationship. If you're in a relationship and you're mid flight and, and perhaps you've started the project together, but over time you've realized that their mind is elsewhere, they're not really engaging with you or, or they're over-involved and they're getting right down into your, your world. Um, you know, again, it depends on the, the nature of how the relationship is failing in terms of, excuse me, how you address it. Um, but I would say for, for the sponsor that's perhaps lost interest or never really had any interest, um, there, are, there are things you can do in terms of, I mean, it, it's always a dialogue, right? So it's always a case of if the relationship is failing, sit down and talk about the relationship. Um, but there's several things. Understand what your role is, first and all. Have that conversation that says, here's what I think I'm doing. Do you agree? Because quite often it will be a bit of a misunderstanding about, well, I thought you were doing this. And I thought I'm doing this. Have that conversation. Work out what you're both doing there together. Work out why you're doing it. Go back to the benefits. Why? Why are we doing this? What is it you want to get out of this? And do we do we agree that what I'm doing as PM will actually get you that? Because quite often, if the sponsors either losing interest, it's because they are worried now that this project's going to fail and they're not going to get what they want, or they're getting over involved for the same reason that they're they're worried that they're not going to get the thing out of it they were expecting. Um, so understand what, what, what their reasons perhaps are for, for um, you know, what their investment is in it. Then there's a conversation that might be had around if they really are just totally disinterested. I'm, you know, I work in HR and I've been put in charge of this finance project, which frankly bores the life out of me. You know, if, if that's how they feel about it, then there's a thing that says, I get that, but this is the role you've been given and I need you to do these things for me. Is it, would it be supportive to talk to someone who is in that world, who can act as a proxy for you into finance perhaps? Or you know, is, is there somebody else who would be better suited to it? If you're not interested, God, cut your losses and, you know, and, and, and some sponsors will just say, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't see why we're doing this. I don't really want to be involved. Um, and, and the brave thing to do at that point is to go, who, who should it be? And, and can we talk to them? What if the sponsor, so one of the questions we've had there is um, any advice or experience of sponsorship swapping halfway through the project or programme? Yes. Which sounds great if the project wants to put their hand up and say, I'm not that interested in this. What if they're really keen but just doing a terrible job? Is is that when you can work with them a little easier? Yeah, I mean, the, the nice thing is if, if you're a PM, there's definitely a supportive role. As I say, that, that PM sponsorship role, it, it, that, that relationship, is absolutely key and if it's working well you can be supporting your sponsor and and you know guiding them through the process because as i say again you know sponsors aren't typically trained in sponsorship they're they're someone with you know seniority within an organization who's been told to get in charge of this um so um definitely there's there's a, an opportunity there with the sponsor changes to again talk to them understand what their interest is um you know motivate them yeah, and that is part of the role of a PM generally is, you know, you've got to motivate the people around you and that goes up as well as down. Um, you know, so, so motivate well. what, what do you get out of this? Well, let's talk about that. Let's focus on that. Let's get excited because this project's going to deliver that for you. But in order to do that, here are the things I need you to do. We're going to hit issues along the way and I'm going to need you to be there for me, vocally getting them out my way. Um, so definitely the uh, a change in sponsor is an opportunity and i've seen it go both ways where a sponsor has been switched in and suddenly the project took off and we you know it was one of those things where we didn't realize how how bad we had it until the new sponsor came in and suddenly everyone was motivated again because you know this person was you know really keen to get things done um but equally you can have a change of sponsor where perhaps a, a, a charismatic uh you know excited enthusiastic uh sponsor has moved on 
and and been replaced with someone perhaps who has no interest in this or or, or actively you know wants to kill it that happens as well and that's that's a really alarming position to be in um but again i i can't stress enough the the, the need for a, a conversation but remembering what the sponsor's role is their role is to look after the benefits to get stuff out of it and that's a really exciting position to be in if you can turn around and say i have delivered value for this organization and i get to you know take credit for that that's what a sponsor gets to do that's great so let's figure out what it is how we do that and then how you as a pm support them to that end and that will be through just delivering the objectives on time and for the for the agreed budget um but yes, whether they're over-involved or under-involved. Over-involved is another one where, where perhaps they're just um, getting right into your world and why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Um, that happens. And, and I, I, I had a situation once where um, I'd been asked to, to come onto a project and um, I sat through the first project meeting, you know, and I was in sort of listen mode, listen to what this project was doing, what, what everyone was thinking, just gauging how everyone was getting on in the room but it was totally dominated by the sponsor. And it was very clear to me that what had happened was that the sponsor um, had just taken over the role of PM and was trying to do the delivery and trying to check up on everyone's actions and what have you done this week and where are we with this? And I sort of said to the, the person who'd asked me to get involved, I said to them afterwards, like, I'm more than happy to do this, but there can only be one PM on this project. Um, you know, we can't both do this. Again, it was a conversation. Here are all the things I'm going to do so you don't need to do them. Yeah, and, and most people ought to be relieved by that. Um, you have these people who will be inclined to micromanage. Um, I'm not saying any of these fixes work straight away. It will take time. You will need to build trust with your sponsor and that doesn't happen overnight. But the more you can say, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm looking after the actions. I'm, don't worry, I'm making sure everyone is doing what they said they would on the plan. And the more you can demonstrate that, the more the sponsor will back up and let you do it. Um, but you need to have that, I'm going to set your expectation, I'm going to do this, and then do it. And then take another bit of your role back, and another bit, and another bit. But also say, you don't have time to do this, because you need to be worried about the benefits. You need to be worried about whether we're getting this. You need to be communicating to your colleagues, other board members, that sort of thing about how this project is going. You're, you, you know, very often the sponsor is the voice of the project to senior management as well. That's, that ought to be taking up more than enough of their time <laughs> than worrying about what you're doing. Uh, again, to use the house building example, why would you commission someone to build an extension for you and then worry about where the bricks are being made every single day and be down on site, you know, have some oversight for sure, but don't be down there doing the PM's job. Amazing, thank you. Quite a ranty answer that one, wasn't it? Quite a ranty I answer, but I didn't mean it to be quite so. <laughs> so we've got some really great questions that have been coming through actually. Um, Terrific. A real variety of over-involved project sponsors and under-involved project sponsors. So um, one comment here is: sponsors that are not engaged uh, are causing more issues because it's easier to manage a sponsor who's doing too much. And getting in the way than it is to get somebody engaged in what they need to do so um that's a, a lot of over involved right. um and a couple of questions for you so okay let me go kind of... for what it's worth on that point I, if i was given the choice i would have the over involved sponsor all day long every day yeah i can yeah. i can see that for sure absolutely <laughs> you, you people have come up with the same question here actually how do you manage working two sponsors on the project at the same time with conflicting ways of achieving the same goal and even differing attitudes <laughs> um going home and crying a lot is the no um that that is a really tricky one um i'm i'm i have a quite a strong view that um you can have multiple people involved in a project but you should only have one sponsor and, and again, this 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 is an issue you see a lot where, you know, well, it's happening in this area and these guys are, you know, both involved in it. Um, they've both got an interest, um, therefore they're both sponsoring it. Now, first, you know, one of them will have more of an interest. They will have, you know, when you think about what the role of the sponsor is, if you've got two people, one of them's probably a champion. One of them will actually stand to get the benefit. And that's the person who you need to be talking to. You know, and there are diplomatic ways of doing this. You can keep them both involved and treat them both as sponsors, 
but in your head know that this this person's my actual sponsor she's the one i'm going to talk to when i've got a problem <laughs> um but yeah that's that's you know trying to spare their feelings perhaps or yeah. perhaps you've just got no no control that you, you've been told these two people are your sponsor deal with it deliver the project and absolutely that's what you should do your role is to deliver the project as a pm um if you have got two sponsors who have conflicting interests um you you need to find that common ground and again if they are both sponsors then they're both charged with delivering the benefits and one might have more interest in this benefit one might have more interest in that benefit use them to focus on those things that they stand to gain from the project um and where there's conflict between them um you need to basically act as as pms quite often have to do as part of the job as facilitator mediator you know one of you has to win this one of you has to win this argument and it, it will be you this week and it will be her next week but we must reach agreement and again if we remember that the role of the sponsor is to have ownership of the benefits quite often you can use them to go back to well how does it help us deliver these um so one way to sort of form unity uh when you've got joint sponsors on a project is to unite them around the fact that you know one they both stand to gain all the plaudits if the project's successful you guys did this well done you know sharing that success um let's do this together um but to unite them around the benefits case this is what you guys are responsible for accountable for even um so let's talk about this how are we as a group of three you two sponsors and me pm going to get this done how are we going to make this successful um and you could even say and and how do you know who do i talk to about this type of issue you know if you're both going to do it am i coming to both of you for everything or is one of you more interested in the finance aspect and i'll talk to you about budget and um, whilst the other's perhaps more interested in are we delivering on time is the go live still on track and i'll talk to you about that i'll share all the information with both of you of course i will but you know maybe you can sort of help and divide that sponsor role because the important thing here as well and i meant to mention it earlier is is sometimes it's not the person actually that's important if you have a uh, a sponsor who's completely disinterested um that's actually not as important as the fact that the role of sponsor is being performed somewhere so i've worked where on projects where i have had a sponsor who's been completely disinterested because um in fairness i think they've been appointed to the role had no interest in the benefits don't care whether we save the money that this project will save us um so i went and spoke to the person who was going to benefit from it and even though they weren't the sponsor in title they were definitely interested in getting this done so i used them as a sponsor and i just had catch ups with them and talked to them and said look so if you are having trouble with a disinterested sponsor one thing might be to do to look at the benefits look who's actually going to accrue those benefits who's going to you know really get the benefit of this project and strike up a conversation with them you don't have to call them the sponsor um but you might want to engage with them and they're going to be more interested in helping you uh so so yes i i, I don't know if that answered the uh, original question but um because I, I think it, i think it did if you've got yeah. two sponsors um or yes, the business right there were two sponsors weren't there yes um, <laughs> So, okay, um, we've also got a question here around around the whole um, the sponsors being accountable for the benefits. So, isn't there a conflict of interest in holding sponsors account to account for the benefits? Won't they polish the truth? <laughs> um, maybe I can't. I can't talk to anyone's honesty. Um, but um, the, the the benefits, if they've been defined well, um, ought to be measurable so when you when we talk about benefits on a project in when you're delivering in an organization in a corporate entity um define the benefits within the business case there, there should be some measure you know pl plenty of people define benefits all day long um and and you know not all benefits are born equal <laughs> and some of them are defined very poorly like we're going to make it better well what does what does better mean you know a, a sponsor could point to any situation and go i made it better job done thank you very much i'll collect my gold watch um that uh, is is a poorly defined benefit if you'll forgive me um benefits ought to have a number against them so if if you're doing it for cost saving purposes how much money will we actually save um and it they that makes this objective thing so it doesn't matter if the sponsor tries to varnish the truth you either save thirty thousand pounds that year or you didn't 
make your benefits measurable, and then you can hold the sponsor to account for them. And they can spin it, fine. I mean, we all, you know, <laughs> spin our own lives. Just look at Facebook. Um, yeah, but there ought to be some measure that says this is either done or it's not. We either achieved the benefit or we didn't. Um, that, that doesn't leave much wriggle room for a sponsor to spin it. I hope that answers the question. That, that's a really interesting one. Thank you. Um, another one I've got here is around sponsors for technology projects. Um, and when the sponsors have communicated functionality on a technical level, pro level prior to checking if it's possible with IT <laughs> or the project. Now, I'm sure that's never happened to anyone on this call, but just in case it has, any tips about that one? Um, so they've said it can do something it can't. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's really difficult. Um, but part of, you know, the sponsor is accountable for the project to the commissioning organization, if you like. They've told someone it can do something. Um, and, um, you know, you, you need to actually um, be honest as a PM. I mean, the, the best advice I've had in my career is just just play the straight bat. There's there's plenty of different ways you can you can spin stuff. But inevitably it's a just play the straight back it gets you out of trouble and if you have to be the pm who delivers the bad news that i know the benefits case is built on us doing this i really don't believe it can be done obviously that conversation should be had in the first instance with the sponsor and actually you're protecting them in having that conversation from getting egg in their face egg on their face later down the road it's the right thing to do to call it out and say you've said it can do this i don't believe it can and here are the reasons now, there may be the situation where they go, well, actually, I've had this other conversation that you're not aware of. And actually, if we're, we're introducing this other piece of technology here, which will make that possible. But if you've got any doubt that the benefits will be achieved, you should absolutely have that conversation with a sponsor. Now, they might say, um, I'm not interested. They might have made a statement. They now don't want to lose space. Well, you as the PM will be updating the project board, typically, or, or, or whoever is the commissioning organization. You, you need to find a way to surface that information. And it might be through um, your risks. There is a risk that this benefit won't be delivered. Um, there will be some reporting functionality. Um, if your sponsor's being particularly devious about it, I mean, I think there is, you know, Escalate is always a valid option. Um, it, I totally understand it can be a career limiting one. Um, <laughs> but, but if you feel very strongly that, you know, this is a problem, you know, it, it's, it's better to have escalated and be shown to be truthful and and you know you, you, you'll be doing it from a place that's motivated by good even if you turn out to be wrong i'm sorry i was really concerned this was a risk to, i was worried about it it was it's right to surface it isn't it totally reasonable conversation to have um and especially if you've tried to engage your sponsor first if you're still concerned they're they're not getting this message escalate but have that conversation from a reasonable place here's my evidence there's no emotion here it's just i don't believe this is going to happen now I don't see how the project for which I am responsible can deliver what you think it's going to. And it's my job as the project manager to highlight that to you. And that's either to the sponsor or it's the sponsor in the first instance or whoever they're reporting to, whoever they're accountable to for the delivery of the project. Excellent. Thank you. I'm conscious of time, but I've got one more question to throw in there before we Flown finish. Flown by. It's flown by, exactly. Um, so in terms of project managers you mentioned at the beginning we invest a lot of time money and effort into hiring project managers and mm. we don't have the same process with the sponsors what's the difference when when bringing in project managers we always ask a lot around stakeholder engagement skills and we don't ask anything about sponsorship management skills is there a big difference between the two if you're good at one does it make you good at the other how would you tackle that um i think I think that was three questions in my apologies. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take them. Um, I mean, the, the question I heard there and that I'm going to choose to answer <laughs> is, um, you know, is, is there a difference between stakeholder management and sponsor management? To which the um, straightforward answer is no. Your sponsor is just another stakeholder on your project. They're, I would argue, the most important one in many ways, but they're a stakeholder. And you manage them the same way as you manage your other stakeholders. You understand what their interest is. You understand what their influence is. You understand how they feel about it, what they expect to get from it. Um, you know, this, this is something you do with all your stakeholders, ideally. Um, and the sponsor is just a key stakeholder. So yeah, sponsorship management is absolutely part of the role. Um, 
But as I say, if, if we're training our sponsors to do their roles properly, hopefully over time that becomes less of a, 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 of a, a, a piece of management that the project manager has to do. It's, it's, a, it's a stakeholder who I have to manage, but actually management of that stakeholder is really easy because they get what they have to do. They understand what the role is and, and I don't need to spend a lot of time managing them. Um, but make no mistake, it's, it's just an extension to the stakeholder management piece. Excellent, thank you. And I think we've actually run out of time. I'm gonna go through all the questions that have come through on the chat and if there's any we've missed, then um, we'll make sure we come back to you and cover those off with you. Yeah, I'm, and I'm happy to, to, yeah, to follow up any questions people may have uh, offline, but it's been really enjoyable. And I hope, I hope people have got something from that they can take away and maybe start to think about their own sponsor relationships and how that's going. I really hope that's been, been useful. But thank you for having me. It's been thank you fun. very much. And for anyone that did ask, um, we have recorded the webinar and we'll be able to send it out once it um, once it comes through to us. So thank you very much and hopefully see you all soon.